In the previous video, we talked about the important properties of the quantities that are found in mathematical models and how we can classify them according to these properties. In this video, we're now going to talk about different types of model equations that appear in mathematical models and how these can be classified. Mathematical models are generally categorized as either algebraic, ODE, or PDE models. An algebraic model is one which only contains model equations with algebraic relationships. They can contain transcendental functions, polynomials, power laws, things like that, but no derivatives or integrals. An ODE model is one that contains one or more model equations with ordinary derivatives. They arise from usually dynamic, that is time dependent, equations and equations that have a continuous parameter space or a continuous domain for the independent variables. ODE models can be easily recognized by terms like dy dt or y prime or y dot that indicate ordinary derivatives. PDE models are models that contain one or more partial derivatives and they arise when there is more than one independent variable that changes continuously. PDE models are easy to identify because they contain partial derivatives annotated by the symbols shown here. ODE models sometimes appear in the form of what are called differential algebraic equations. A set of DAEs is a set of model equations in which some equations are algebraic and some are ODEs. They may also include integral differential equations or IDEs. IDEs are model equations containing both integrals and derivatives. Both DAEs and IDEs have similar complexities and often IDEs are in fact converted or reformulated as ODEs in order to solve them. So for the purpose of discussing these, we can broadly classify all such models as ODE models. Typically, the same solution strategies used for ODEs are also used for DAEs and IDEs. It's important to remember that the differential operators, things like d by dt, d by dx, d squared dt squared, all have dimensions and units. The, these operators have dimensions that are the reciprocal of the dimensions of the independent variable. So the d by dt differential operator has dimensions of reciprocal time. In this diagram, the partial derivative of the dependent variable u with respect to x at x1 and y1 is the slope of the tangent line to the surface in the x direction at x1 and y1 and the partial derivative of u with respect to y at x1 and y1 is the slope of the tangent line in the y direction at x1 and y1. You're familiar with these definitions of the partial derivatives from your study of calculus. The partial derivatives are sometimes also annotated u sub x for the first partial derivative of u with respect to x, or u sub xx for the second partial derivative of u with respect to x. These partial derivative operators also have dimensions and units, just like the total derivative operators do. We'll find that the equations used for modeling chemical and biological phenomena in three dimensions can often be simplified by using the del operator, or the symbol called nabla. The del operator is a vector. It's the sum of the three partial derivatives with respect to the three coordinate dimensions, each multiplied by the unit vector in that direction. The unit vectors are annotated by the e1, e2, and e3 here. When the argument of the del operator is a scalar field, the result is a vector called the gradient. Appendix B of the notes summarizes the algebra and the calculus of scalars, vectors, and tensors, and it includes some additional uses of the del operator. But when we see the del operator as a gradient of a scalar field, as shown here, then we know that our, a model equation is a PDE model because it contains these partial derivatives. Another notation that we briefly introduced in the previous lecture is the Jacobian. For a model with multiple functions relating dependent and independent variables, it's frequently convenient to organize the partial derivatives in a matrix. So if dependent variable u1 is a function f1 of x and y, and dependent variable u2 is a function f2 of x and y, then the Jacobian 
is defined as the matrix of partial derivatives of those functions with respect to each of the variables. Each function is represented by a row in the Jacobian, and each of the independent variables is represented by a column. Anytime we see the Jacobian operator, we know that we're looking at a PDE model equation. Another way that models can be classified is according to their linearity. A linear model equation contains only linear functions and combinations of the dependent variables and their derivatives. Linear models may contain nonlinear functions of the independent variables. For example, if alpha, beta, and gamma are constant parameters, and x is our dependent variable here, with time as the independent variable, then this model represents a linear, second order, ordinary differential equation. It's linear because x and its derivatives, dx dt and the second derivative of x with respect to t, only appear in linear combinations of terms. It doesn't matter what form the function f of t is on the right hand side of this equation because t is the independent variable and the independent variable does not need to be linear in order for us to have a linear model equation. Only the dependent variable and its derivatives need to appear in linear terms. Often linear ODEs have analytical solutions. Furthermore, Linear equations obey a principle called superposition. Superposition is a very powerful principle for solving ODEs and algebraic models. The principle of superposition tells us that various effects on the dependent variables can be added together to get the sum of their effects. Nonlinear model equations can be identified by nonlinear combinations of the dependent variables. This model equation is nonlinear because the first derivative of x with respect to time is squared, and also because the reciprocal of x appears in this third term. Nonlinear model equations may not have analytical solutions. They may need to be reformulated or approximated by linear forms in order to solve them, and they likely do not obey the principle of superposition, making their solutions more difficult. Each of the models shown on the left-hand side of this slide represents a linear model. In the first one, x and y are the dependent variables. There are two model equations, and in each equation, x and y and their derivatives only appear in linear combinations. In the second model, ca is the dependent variable, and again, it only appears in linear terms. The third model contains a sum of the second derivative of x, the first derivative of x, and a term containing x. As long as the nu and the omega squared here are constants, then this is a linear model. The models shown on the right-hand side are nonlinear. While this first model equation is linear, the second model equation is not, because one of the dependent variables appears in the reciprocal and it's squared. That's a nonlinear term. This model is nonlinear because we have a nonlinear combination of CA and CB appearing in both model equations. Recognizing model linearity is very important because it will tell you what types of solution strategies can be used to solve an equation. A model. The third way that we will classify model equations is based on whether the model equations are coupled or non-coupled. Non-coupled model equations can be written so that the dependent variables are functions only of the independent variables and themselves. In each of the examples shown here, the y's represent the dependent variables and the x's represent the independent variables. For algebraic models, when equations for the dependent variables can be written containing only the independent variables and one of the dependent variables, then the equations are non-coupled. They're coupled if an equation for y1 is written containing y2, an equation for y2 is written containing y1. The same is true for ODE and PDE models. If only y1 and its derivatives appear in one equation and only y2 and its derivatives appear in another equation, then this PDE model is non-coupled. However, if y1 and y2 both appear in the equation for y1 and y1 and y2 both appear in the equation for y2, then the model is coupled. Coupled equations in general are more difficult to solve. Non-coupled model equations can be solved independently or sequentially whereas coupled model equations require simultaneous solutions. 
In non-coupled model equations, each dependent variable can be solved for without solving for the other dependent variables. This makes them much easier. In coupled model equations, the dependent variables must be solved for simultaneously. Sometimes, model equations can be reformulated to decouple them. How about these equations? Are these equations coupled or non-coupled? Notice that y1 appears by itself in the first equation, but y1 also appears in the equation for y2. In this case, we would say that the model is coupled, but we might say that the coupling is only in one direction. In fact, models like this can often be solved analytically using the stra same strategies that are used for non-coupled equations. However, they must be solved in the correct order. Y1 can be solved without knowing the solution for Y2. Once the solution for Y1 is known, it can be substituted into the equation for Y2, and then Y2 can be solved. But Y2 cannot be solved without knowing Y1. Therefore, we still consider this to be a coupled set of equations. Next, we'll consider whether model equations are explicit or implicit. Explicit model equations are ones for which the dependent variable and its derivatives can be separated from all other variables on one side of an equal sign. Explicit models can often be solved directly. For implicit model equations, on the other hand, the dependent variables and their derivatives cannot be readily separated from other variables on one side of an equal sign. They may require root finding or other iterative techniques to solve them. In this video, we considered four ways of classifying model types. They can be classified according to whether they're algebraic, ODE, or PDE models. They can be classified according to whether the model equations are linear or nonlinear, coupled or non-coupled, and explicit or implicit. By identifying these features of models, you will know what kinds of strategies you should use to solve the model. Identifying these features will also help you find simplifications that can be essential for finding solutions to the model. For example, Nonlinear models can often be linearized. ODE models can be converted to algebraic models. And coupled equations can be decoupled. Identifying these features helps you to identify the strategy that you'll need to use to solve the models. In the next video, we'll talk about some of the key features of model solutions.